Welcome to a Bible study uh, this evening, and a warm welcome to Cliff, uh, also to Bible study. Hello. Um, we're going to be uh, discussing uh, this evening from the scriptures the subject of same-sex marriage. And I, I'm going to start by um, quoting uh, some of the verses from Romans written by the Apostle Paul. And um, I'll first say that Paul was a very loving man and cared deeply for uh, the salvation of souls and for people to come to a knowledge of the Lord. So anyone who discounts Paul's words um, has to wonder whether um, they should be um, uh, reading even the words of our Lord. I, I, I say that before I start from Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and I'll go through to Romans chapter 2, verse 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. As it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural. In the same way, their men abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. You therefore, chapter two, have no excuse. You who pass judgment on them, for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourselves because you who pass judgment do the same things. Don't you know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth? So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that his kindness leads you towards repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant hearts, you are storing up wrath against yourselves for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgments will be revealed. God will give to every man according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, there will be eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be trouble and distress. There will be wrath and anger for every human being who does evil. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good. Now, Paul goes on and he says, 
um, and I'm going to just, <laughs> I just got distracted when you looked at your watch. I want to point out the most important aspect is God does not show favoritism. All those who sin under the law will perish, apart from the law, will perish apart from the law. All those who sin under the law will be judged by the law. And that speaks to God's um, equal equality, recognition of equality. Yep. He shows no favoritism. That's true. And I'll finish by this. Indeed, when the Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. For they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, their thoughts now accusing, now even defending them. Mm. This will take place on the day when God will judge men's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. That's Paul's gospel. And it's the same gospel that he mentions in Romans 1 that he is not ashamed of. And um, it's sandwiched between is this um, expose on human behavior without recognizing God. Now, the reason I'm speaking straight to the camera, Cliff, is because they haven't, the controllers not got back to the wide angle. Um, so this this evening we're going to discuss um, what is now um, we're on the threshold of uh, legislation for same-sex marriage and um, Hugh and John are not with us this evening uh, John has a family commitment and Hugh has a family commitment so I'm delighted that Clifford Hill can be with me I'm hoping that you'll go to the wide which will tell me that we're now back on, on air um, Cliff um, a year ago, David Cameron said that <clears throat> this is a Christian country. Mm -hmm. It was on the back of the 400th anniversary of the mm -hmm. King James Bible being published, first published. And I just wonder what you think <coughs> he means by that and, and what it could possibly mean in the light of the, the recent push, which um, Boris Johnson said yesterday, mm -hmm. they need to whack through same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. through Parliament. Well, David Cameron was certainly right in saying that we are a Christian country in the sense of our heritage. Uh, we have never been uh, uh, anything else in the last thousand years or more. And the... Um, um, uh, the, the, the I mean, this is the, the fact uh, of what has happened in our lifetime, really, has changed all that. That's really uh, what... Um, the situation that we are f facing today because our heritage is gradually disappearing. Um, but uh, for a thousand years and more, we have most certainly been a Christian country. Um, what will happen in future, I don't know. Mm. Because the uh, very foundations of our Christian civilization are being chipped away. And uh, uh, the pillars of society are crumbling. Um, and all this is being added to by um, uh, recent legislation. Yeah. So uh, that's the situation. Yes, yeah. we, um, right if we're talking about our heritage, yeah. but certainly not now. Um, and right also if in terms of um, the population, mm -hmm. the 19... Um, uh, no, the, the 2001 census, the last census, in fact, that has been published, because so far we haven't had all the figures for the 2011 census, the, the last census actually shows 73% of the nation said that they are Christians. Mm. So, uh, yes, he would be right um, in the, the year 2010 in saying we are a Christian nation. Mm. Now... Um He's very kindly said that he wants to include the churches of England and Wales. So I'd like to think it includes this channel in the consultation on this whole subject of, of mm. gay marriage now yeah. or same sex marriage. Now, yeah. all we can do is speak from the scriptures. Well, for most of the churches, I don't think you've even heard of it. That's the trouble. Um, it's had very little publicity. Um, but of course, as we know, uh, 600,000 um, Christians have bothered to take part. Um, and that uh, was the Downing Street 
um, petition. Uh, that was one that was a, 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 that was a privately run okay. um, petition. It was not yep. the actual Downing Street uh, one online. Yes. Um, I think there were only about a, uh, between 100 and 200,000 okay. um, actually participated in that. Which is significant in that. terms of... Downing Street petitions. Um, it, it is actually. It, yeah. uh, it's over hundred thousand, which um, mm. by by um, I mustn't say by by law, but certainly by uh, the current regulations, should trigger uh, a debate mm. uh, in the House uh, uh, or at least in uh, Westminster Hall. Mm. Um, and before we go to the scriptures uh, on the politics, yeah. uh, you know, for for me, it just seems shocking that there. Uh, hasn't been this public debate on yeah. the subject, but equally in the Conservative manifesto, the governing, yeah. the leading member of the coalition governing party, yeah. they um, mm. didn't mention it. No. no. So there's something wrong. No. When yeah. you think that they argue how important it is yep, indeed. Um, and yeah. say, well, it's a fundamental human right and we are not being fair yeah. and equal, yeah. mm. what, if mm. it's so important, why wasn't it mentioned in why? the manifesto? Indeed. And, and no political party put it in their manifesto, uh, even the Lib Dems, mm. um, as far as I'm aware. And, and therefore, um, it shouldn't be sprung upon the electorate like that's midway through a, a parliamentary term. Mm. But there we are. It, it, uh, there's general chaos um, in the whole of Westminster and Whitehall anyway over all sorts of issues, um, the economy or family or whatever. Um, uh, there are so many issues that the politicians are at variance over. They, they're running around like legless chickens, really, or headless chickens, yeah. really. <laughs> um, and uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's no wonder, really, that we are in a muddle over this particular issue. Now, um, uh, from my perspective and uh, our perspective, we're pretty powerless to yes. stop the politicians doing Absolutely. what they decide to do, yep. whether they're Christian politicians yep. or sure. non-Christian politicians. Mm. But there's something mm. in here, and I, I'm hoping that some who we consider friends who are yep. in Parliament, sure. you know, would just mm. listen to the arguments of Paul because he uses terms which are very difficult to, mm. to get around. He, mm. he says that um, mm. it's indecent... He mm. says that it's shameful. Mm. He says that it's not natural. Mm. Um, and reading earlier in the passage, and I know that there was a cultural mm. context, mm. but he's specifically talking mm. on this subject. It's New mm. Testament, not Leviticus. And, and he says, mm. look, mm. they are foolish. <laughs> mm. And mm. Uh, higher up, it, it's godless and mm. it's wicked. And, um, it's synonymous, mm. um, mm. wickedness and godlessness. Mm. Uh, yes, I, I really don't want to get into no. um, uh, gay bashing. No. Um, you know, I've never been in that uh, section That's in why the I've whole of my life. Here. Um, uh, I've had a long pastoral ministry of churches in inner city London, of course, and I've known many homosexuals in my long ministry, and um, I have never rejected them mm. or treated them in other than in love. Um, and uh, I recognise their needs, and so I have great uh, sympathy and understanding of that. Um, they have been made to feel um, unequal and second-class citizens and inferior and all the rest of it, and I can understand that they want to feel, uh, to get rid of those sort of uh, feelings. Now, that doesn't alter the fact that um, uh, that uh, I don't accept their lifestyle, I don't, mm. uh, and I'm not happy with it. But um, um, if you examine what the Bible says, uh, th th for a start, um, we have to recognize that marriage uh, as one man and one woman is part of God's creation. Mm. Even Jesus speaks about that, doesn't he? In, um, isn't it in Matthew? Um, that he, uh, Matthew 19, when he's talking about divorce, mm. that um, uh, he says, at the beginning, mm. the creator made them male and female mm. and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father. This is Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. Um, <clears throat> for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, mm. and the two will become one flesh, mm. which means that they will have the uh, ability for procreation, for the procreation of the human race, mm. whereby we, uh, God, is the one who, uh, who actually 
does the creating mm. um, because we are made in his image. Mm. Um, but that is not possible, of course, for um, a homosexual couple. Mm. <clears throat> and I can understand that um, two men or two women may love one another, um, but nevertheless, that is not marriage. Mm. This is what marriage is all about, mm. um, is the, the possibility of coming together as one flesh uh, in the act of procreation, mm. which is God's way of continuing his original creation, mm. of continuing the human mm. race. Because obviously they they can bypass that today with the you know IVF treatments IVF and you know all yeah. sorts of artificial alternatives. But yes, what but you consequences see, does that? Yes, uh, the consequences for the children. Mm. Um, every child has the right to know it, it's um, putative fa mother and father, um, and uh, so as the the children grow up. Um, in from that kind of generation, um, they are really going to feel deprived and psychologically damaged. Um, children need a mother and father, and uh, and and you find even with ag adopted children, um, as they grow up, they have a, a, a an insatiable desire to know who their real parents were, mm. uh, and. Um, if you deprive a child of that knowledge of, um, and the comfort of, uh, uh, the, uh, of knowing who, where they came from, uh, you are really denying a fundamental human right to put I mean, it in the PC terms yeah, of today. I mean, even um, Elton John has said that he's dreading the moment that his um, Indeed. adopted son, I think it is, yes. asks him, where's mummy? Where's mummy? I mean, that's not exactly. from us. No. Uh, you know, it's obvious, really. No, precisely. Um, and he knows, therefore, yeah. and acknowledges that there's something missing. A fundamental mm. right is mm. missing um, in the life of his child. Mm. Um, what about the institution of marriage itself, you know, as, as it's presently... Mm. Um, uh, well, speaking the sociologically, yeah. the uh, uh, marriage is um, uh, is the most stable form of um, and lasting form of um, union of a man and a woman, and uh, there's so much family breakdown today that is causing huge amount of suffering, not just for adults but for children as well. Mm. It is a strange thing that. Many children actually feel responsible when their parents argue mm -hmm. and when their parents fight and, uh, or, um, um, uh, or, or, or separate. Mm -hmm. um, and it does huge damage to the children. Mm -hmm. Family breakdown is, I think, the greatest tragedy of our generation. That so many um, families have broken up with such huge... Um, trouble for the children. You see, uh, when children um, live in a reconstituted family um, where, where mum has taken on another man, um, uh, he can't possibly replace their father. Um, a hundred thousand children run away from home every year and uh, uh, virtually 100% of them, all of them, are from broken homes where children really uh, cannot um, abide um, living uh, in that kind of... having to get to know a different um, man whom they're supposed to call father mm -hmm. and uh, other siblings who are not from their family and so on. Uh, the, the disturbance in the life of children is enormous. They suffer educationally, they suffer um, uh, emotionally, and they suffer in health. Mm -hmm. And their life chances are... Um, uh, uh, disturbed and so um, it is a scar really for life not just something but that this lasts for five um, minutes see, the argument would be this isn't put necessarily to be put at the door of same sex marriage I in, mean this can happen in <coughs> broken homes on a far greater scale yes I'm know, sorry I'm not really making myself clear yeah. uh, what I'm saying is that, that marriage is the, the most um, stable and lasting form mm. of marriage now we obviously we all know that um, with weak and sinful human beings such as we are yeah. uh, things do go wrong yeah. uh, and marriage does break down but it's still 60% um, um, of all marriages last a lifetime. Mm. You know, we ought to 
celebrate that, actually, rather than say, oh, 40% breakdown. Let's say 60% actually last a lifetime. Uh, and the children of those marriages that last, uh, actually, uh, the outcomes for their lives are far, far better uh, in, in every dimension. Um, now, your, your, your experiences as a sociologist, you've lectured at the um, London School of Economics, so you've been at that level, but also you've mm. um, had a, a lifelong um, mm. calling in the ministry as, yeah. as an ordained yes. minister. Yeah. Um, yes. It's it's your sort of understanding of the scriptures which drives your sociology, not the other way around. Oh, absolutely, yeah. um, certainly. But the two really go together because yeah. uh, um, my sociology gives me the empirical evidence, mm. gives me the facts, in other words, yeah. that go alongside to confirm my understanding of marriage yeah. and family, yeah. which comes from the Bible. Um, uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, there are hundreds, literally hundreds of research, um, pieces of research mm. that have taken taken place over the last 40 years that, that show us that marriage is the most um, stable form of family and that children suffer as, uh, alongside uh, human beings, of course, but they suffer most. Now, um, it, 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 once, once the family is destroyed, um, the whole of society begins to crumble because family is the building block of, of society mm -hmm. and it's what all our social institutions are based upon mm -hmm. and if you destroy a family uh, and that in fact is it, it really comes from um, uh, the uh, homosexual lobby um, way back in the 1970s you see and I can go back to this time I remember in 1972 uh, the gay the London um, um, just the distinguishing London now. Just, I want to bring up the points about yeah. um, gay bashing. We're not doing that, but it no, is no. it is worth um, oh, well, looking we at the history. We have to say this. This is a sociological fact exactly. that I want to just and, get and, off. And there is this lobby, and yeah. you can actually chart it sociologically. Well, pre pre precisely. Yeah. Um, uh, all I'm, I'm saying is that that uh, in 1972, the London group um, of the um, 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 Gay Liberation Front, as they called themselves in those days, issued uh, a manifesto. And one sentence in it said that the family is the source of our oppression and must be destroyed. Mm. Then, um, uh, half a dozen years later, um, nine, in um, 1979, um, they reissued this. And what was it entitled with, again? With it was called stronger. The... Uh, it, was, it was called um, a manifesto. Yeah. The manifesto of mm. the uh, uh, the um, gay liberation fl mm. front mm. front, mm. <laughs> and um, uh, they they said uh, again this. Uh, in fact, they elaborated upon it because they were saying really that um, they wanted to see the um, nuclear family mm. in particular, uh, and and as well as the extended family, really um, destroyed because it was the, the source of their oppression. Um, and uh, what they were looking for was a kind of communist society in which children will be brought up by the group rather than really? by individuals, really? and mm. that uh, you wouldn't have married relationships. In fact, it, it, it described the family in those terms. The 1979 one said that um, you have um, a man and a, 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 a slave as his wife. Um, to, to serve him, and they force upon their children their own values. Mm. Uh, and this is what they want to get away Shocking. from. So they wanted um, a different form of relationships, mm. of loose relationships, as it were. Because the interesting thing is now they, they're arguing that they're trying to form the perfect family. They, you know, they mm. use the terminology as mm -hmm. they do mm. use the term yeah. marriage or want That's to right. use the term mm. that marriage, but yeah. mm. they... Mm. have a different take yeah. on exactly mm. what that That's means. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yes, but as, as I say, you know, I understand their, their desire for equality and so on, but what the one thing you can't do, we've already got um, uh, civil unions, and the one thing you can't do, though, is to redefine marriage without 
destroying the very foundations of society. Mm. And, and our constitution is very tightly yeah. intertwined yeah. with, with yeah. the institution of marriage. Well, that's right. And, uh, and there's both a biblical basis for saying this and a yeah. sociological basis. Yeah. And unfortunately, most of our MPs are neither Bible-believing Christians or sociologists. Mm. Um, otherwise, they would understand the, uh, the issues that they're facing. And instead of which, they're just simply saying, oh, well, this is a, an equality issue isn't it and so we'll we'll vote for it and uh, the chances are that it will go through mm -hmm. because the prime minister's driving it um, and uh, uh, the other two parties are uh, committed to it are, are yeah. already committed yeah. to it and yeah. um, we will um, we've got the emails open if you want to text if you disagree with us mm -hmm. um, if you come from a totally different persuasion whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian mm -hmm. uh, and you support the whole gay thing um, uh, please email in. You have an opportunity to do that. I, I want to just read um, something which is going to be distributed to MPs and, and tomorrow, T tomorrow, I think. And yes. then, um, it's a book that's being published tomorrow. Right. Mm. And then um, we'll look at some more scriptures Yeah, that's right. on the subject. Mm. Yeah. Um, this is um, being sent out by the Anglican mainstream. Yeah. Uh, and I think Chris Sugton is the contact yes. for this. Mm. Um, uh, it's entitled Equal Marriage is Fundamentally Flawed, says New In-Depth Study. Now, within this, um, I'm going to just read... Um, uh, Chris Sugden says, Our report is unashamedly academic and educational. Um, it's full of hard-hitting facts and evidence against um, same-sex marriage. Um, that the SSM... Um, proponents dare not face mm. and try to avoid. Mm. In view of the government's impending announcement of gay marriage legislation, and that's um, expected tomorrow, mm. um, this week, the report is being mailed to all members of Parliament, House of Parliament, and also to 350 chairmen of Conservative constituency mm. associations. Um, now, it's very interesting that he writes in here where the constituency chairmen are. On, on the subject. I won't read the whole of this out, but um, the percentages were stark. I can't quite see it, um, um, uh, Cliff. Somewhere in here, it mentioned that seven out of ten yes, thought right. that David mm. Cameron should drop yes. the legislation. Yes, that's right. And yet, mm. the advocates of, mm. of it are suggesting mm. that it's got overwhelming support in the country. Mm. Uh, I can't actually dispute uh, figures because I yeah, haven't done I know. Yeah. any my research on it myself. But I've got it here. Polling mm. by Comrades has found mm. that 7 in 10 mm. um, Tory constituency chairmen want David Cameron to drop the proposal. 6 in 10 believe mm. it will lose their party more votes than mm. it will gain. And mm. nearly 5 in 10 report mm. a loss of association members <gasps> over the issue. Mm. Um, mm. But that's just mm. the Conservative Party. Yeah. And also, mm. I'd say mm. that's probably taken mm. that poll before... Mm. Mm. We had this mm. move mm. by senior Tories, indeed, Boris Johnson, mm. um, which Michael Gove, John Major, and John Major, just come out so today. You can't, really. no, yeah. We can no longer yeah. say this is just no. a pet project of no. David Cameron. No, it, it's indeed. far more reaching. Mm. Than that. No, but I think the Conservative Party is uh, committing suicide over this because they will lose a vast number of mm. uh, votes at the next election. Mm. They're trying to rush it through quickly now without any proper um, debating uh, in Parliament, let alone um, a national debate mm. um, or referendum mm. uh, as they should have on an issue like uh, as, as important and as mm. fundamental as this. Mm. Um, and uh, I don't think any of them have realised the, the harm that they are doing to the nation. Mm. Um, and if this is passed, they will be asking the Queen to sign this into law. And the Queen is the uh, head of the Church of England. Which has a different position. Which has an entirely different position. Um, so Pres Presently has an entirely different position. Is, you know, is, is she, it doesn't yes, is she to follow um, the lead of her church, of which she is the head, or to obey Parliament? And if Parliament asks her to do something which she believes is totally against the word of God, um, which is part of her coronation oath, does she break her coronation oath or um, uh, in order to obey Parliament? Or does she create a, a constitutional crisis and say, no, I'm not going to sign this? I mean, some would say that she's done that 
multiple times, you know, over since the 1960s. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. that Parliament yeah. is sovereign, as they would say, yeah. and can yeah. put, force her to do anything mm. she wants, uh, but, they want. But the Queen is very committed to family. Mm. She has seen um, at close, close hand mm. the devastating effects of family breakdown. Mm. And she's very committed mm. to um, uh, strengthening family life, mm. not undermining it. And this will undermine family life. Mm. What the Conservatives, what the government should be doing, the coalition should be doing, is strengthening family life, mm. uh, giving tax breaks to, to married couples, anything to strengthen yeah. marriage and family, not undermine it. That certainly fizzled, didn't it, when he said he would have recognised marriage in the tax system. That never quite materialised. Exactly. Um, no, we haven't seen um, that. I think it was about no. four pence a week or something, you know, or four pounds a week. Or yes, something. yes. Um, I just That's read right. a couple of the points mm. here. Um, mm. um, the concept of the report concludes the concept of equal marriage is fundamentally flawed as it presupposes a questionable notion of equality and ignores the essential and defining components of conventional marriage. That's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah. Gay marriage falsely judges parenting roles as interchangeable. Yes, that's I, right. I mean, you can't um, uh, say that um, a man can fulfil all the uh, requirements of, of motherhood. He mm. can't. It, it, it's mm. Biologically, we can't um, be interchangeable in our roles. Of course, um, in terms of um, our... Uh, relationships within marriage, uh, of, of course, a lot is interchangeable. Mm. Um, you know, we're not like the Victorian family uh, today in, to in today's mm. marriage, mm. but um, the, there are psychologically uh, and as well as physiologically um, different roles of motherhood and fatherhood. Mm. Um, I'll read one or two more because we could, otherwise we get tied into the, the, the sure. depth of it. Yeah. Um, mm. There's no evidence that same-sex couples will benefit from the commitment device yep. invoked by marriage. Indeed. That's an argument that, you know, they will be more loyal, I suppose, in their mm -hmm. um, relationships. Yeah. 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 If love and commitment are the sole criterion for marriage, then mm. alarming consequences ensure, ensue, such mm. as the validation of incestuous relationships, mm. if, if, if it's so important, yeah. um, as well as recognition of polygamous Mm. polyamorous, I don't know what that means, relationships <laughs> as it's already begun to occur in countries with same-sex marriage. So, yes, polyamorous, yeah. I, I think it just simply means that uh, they'll have um, multiple relationships. Yeah. And of course this could be the next step. Yeah. Um, if uh, you, you once accept um, this uh, um, as uh, being legal in, in marriage, you're undermining the mm. whole of the uh, conventional um, restrictions upon marriage, mm. wh whereby you can't marry your sister or um, uh, your um, your mother's sister. You know, there's a whole list of them, mm. isn't there? In Leviticus um, 18, it sets them out. Yes, yes. And the, the interesting thing about those, th that whole list, really, is for the health of society. Because if you, you know, if you have incestuous um, relationships, uh, it very quickly leads to madness and mm. to um, yeah. mental instability. Yeah. Um, and yeah. uh, uh, these regulations, in, in where by um, uh, homosexual relationships are included in these which are banned mm. in Leviticus chapter 18, there's a whole chapter of them, mm. um, uh, are all part of the health regulations for society yeah. which are given in scripture. Now, um, Paul, in that passage I recited, mm. emphasised a lot about, about law, what was right, what yeah, was sure. wrong. That's right. And it seems as though this is just one of many issues yeah, where we've right. sort of yeah. become detached from mm. our roots mm. yeah, and yeah, our yeah, moorings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you were into the second half of the programme now, if you were to look at what are the fundamental issues that have led to us getting to this position... We wouldn't have imagined it oh, 20, even dear. 20 years yes, ago that we'd yeah. get to this mm, position. Yeah. What well, has gone wrong in mm, our country? Well, I have to say, you know, personally, I'm really fed up with this, discussing this. And, and I yeah. think it, it's absolutely tragic that the mm. church is so locked into all this stuff, mm. which seems to me there are so many far more important um, issues um, that we should be talking about in society. Um, on, on the um, uh, Today programme this morning, Clifford Longley gave the... Uh, 
thought for today. And uh, he was speaking about um, the, there needs to be a fundamental shift in um, uh, the, the nation's morals mm. to return to biblical basis of morals, which were at the very foundation of our national life. And it's talking about the economy. Um, you know, it, it, the, the, the London was, the, uh, has been for, for, for generations, the centre of the financial world. Uh, and the whole of its, um, its ethos was based upon biblical principles of morality, uh, of truth and integrity mm. um, and uh, you didn't have to look at all the small print when you when you just shook hands on a deal because uh, a trader's word was his bond mm. uh, and all that has been lost in our society today um, and once you lose trust in uh, the business world and the financial world, um, the whole of the economy begins to shake. And that is really what has happened in our society. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't just uh, greed and um, avarice uh, that has been exposed. And, and, uh, and you see, I believe it is God who is doing this. I believe God is having his own um, Advent season. Uh, ad uh, at Advent, we celebrate the coming of light and truth. Um, that's what John's Gospel, the prologue of John's Gospel, John chapter 1 uh, says, um, light and truth have come in the form of Jesus, our Messiah. God's having his own special um, Advent season right now. And he's and it's exposing... it's on every level, isn't it? Is there, Absolutely. I mean, you, you've got the banking, you've yep. got the journalism, the politicians. The politics, yes. Um, yep. And the Jimmy Savile, you know, the whole... The, the, right the, across the, the board, child, light is being yes, shone. Yes, in, on the arts and the media now, yes. as well as in the economy and, uh, yeah. uh, and the child abuse and all the rest mm. of it. All these things. You know, every day something fresh uh, mm. is revealed. Mm. And, and this is not just coincidence. Mm. This is God mm. having his Advent season now. And Advent, remember, prepares the way for the coming of Messiah. Yeah. And so uh, yeah. are we getting near to the end times that, yeah. that, that Jesus speaks about in the Bible? Uh, we haven't time to get no. into that tonight. But I mean, but the shining of the light is mm. not arbitrary. I well, mean, it has an that absolute is the whole purpose. point. And I, I know you're mm. you're famous for yeah. saying there's a shaking, and I, I've been reflecting yep. on yep. that passage in Haggai. Yes, and it yep. it ends the passage by saying, yep. "And in this place, I will grant peace." Precisely. In other words, the shaking yes. is mm. separating yes. things that are really incompatible with yes. God's yes. word and God's yeah. nature. Yes to yes. refine what is true um, yeah. peace and true life. Oh, that passage I've, I've been speaking about now for 30 years, yeah. um, because uh, this is what God has promised to do. In a little while, I'll once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land and all the nations mm. in their political uh, uh, and economic and social um, pillars are but it's and not they're all crumbling it's not now. capricious no, no, it's actually no, 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 no. for a purpose to refine well, uh, and and well correct. precisely exactly and it is because god sees what we don't see he sees the big picture and he sees the the uh, much more than our little lifespan um, he sees what's going to happen in 50 years or 100 years time uh, as well as what's happened 200 years ago so he's seeing the the big picture in a way we don't we see just a little bit at, at, at a time our lifespan and uh, God knows that what we are doing in our lifetime is damaging the life chances of our children, our grandchildren, and our, ch our children's children mm -hmm. for generations to come mm -hmm. because we are changing the whole uh, morality. And once you mess about with truth, mm -hmm. you, you started off by reading Romans. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, here, Romans 1. How does it start? The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven um, against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth mm. by their wickedness. Mm. Now, I want to say that 
this, it, this word does not just apply to our nation or one little section like the homosexuals mm. in our nation. Um, uh, this across, mainly across applies the to his, the church. Yes. It is we yes. who are the very centre of it. It is the church who is responsible for the state of our nation mm. today. God holds his church responsible for the state of the moral and spiritual health of the nation. Totally agree. And until we recognize that and we come ourselves in repentance before God. Mm. I don't know I don't know the new Archbishop. I have been um, very close uh, in friendship at, um, to, uh, to Rowan Williams um, but I don't know the new uh, incoming Archbishop. But I hope that the very first thing he will do is to call the church to repentance. Mm. It's no good out calling the nation to repentance. They don't even know what repentance no, is. No. But the trouble, the, tr the tragic thing really is that even the church doesn't know yeah. what it is. You know, there's um, a passage in, in Malachi. In fact, the whole of Malachi, I think yeah. there's, there's um, seven places in which which uh, um, uh, God uh, says that they, that, that they should be repenting, but they don't even know what that's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, they keep asking they, they say, um, how have we shown contempt to your name? Um, uh, and how have we defiled you, you know? Um, they, this is chapter two, isn't it? Uh, yeah. that, no, that was chapter that, one, that actually. Was chapter one. Yeah. Uh, that was verses six and seven. Um, uh, they, they really, Israel at that time, really didn't know how they defended God. Mm. You know, why? Uh, they were complaining against God. Why are you um, upset with us? Uh, why are you calling for repentance? What have we done wrong? And, and this is what's going on in the church today. Uh, and the answer that is there in um, right the end of chapter 2, verse 17. You have wearied the Lord with your words. And then they, they, they come back. Lord, how have we wearied him? Um, well, the answer is, all who do evil, uh, no, sorry, by saying that all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord and he's pleased with them. Mm -hmm. In other words, by turning upside down the whole, well, by calling good evil and evil good, by calling black white and white black. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, turning upside down the very basis of, of morality. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened in our nation. But why? Because the church has not taught the word of God. Mm. has not taught the basis of justice and equality. All these things which should have been um, uh, the very foundational um, uh, ethos of our nation have been disappearing mm. because the church has not held fast to the truth. Mm. Now, uh, I, I mean, also I... also not been outwardly speaking on the subject. I mean, we've been exactly. very inward looking. There's exactly. so much going on in exactly. terms of inward activities in Precisely. the church. Yeah. but no real impacts in the That's public right. sphere. Yeah. There's so much unbelief, even amongst the clergy and the preachers, the ministers. Mm. Um, liberal theology, which we've had around now for uh, uh, yeah. 120 years, um, I suppose. And now. empty churches. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I, I went through this because I trained as a minister. It took me years to recover my faith from the impact of the theological training, the, uh, the, the, the spiritually dead academic training mm. that I had. Mm. Um, and uh, this is really what is, is the basic trouble in the church, that we have departed from the word of God. Mm. We haven't taught the simple faith of the teaching of Jesus, of the gospel of Jesus, mm. that God really loves us. Jesus died for us. Mm. And when we really turn to him and uh, accept what he's done for us yeah. and, and our need, um, it totally it changes the life. Sort of the, f the framework of reference in terms of yeah. what is right and what is wrong, what Precisely. is sinful. Because if you don't yeah. recognize yeah. the sin, why do you need a savior? Absolutely. I mean, that's the point. And yeah. so if yeah. the devil can manage yeah. to eradicate yeah. the sin, that's right. he, he, he's eliminated the whole gospel. Precisely. And we've got quite a few emails that have just suddenly... <laughs> what happens is they're like London buses. They, they don't come yeah, yeah. and then suddenly they all yeah. lurch um, yeah. uh, towards us. Well, I think we're getting to the very heart yes, of it now, though, I aren't we? So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'll, read, I'll read a few of them. Um, mm. Jane Gordon writes... Um, 
Uh, the dictionary definition clearly states that marriage is between a man and a woman. Yes. Is the government going to change every dictionary in the land? <laughs> yes. um, uh, an another one... And once they change it, they, turn, they have to change the terminology of the family, yeah. as they've done in Spain. Yeah. So, um, uh, we, so the, the terms mother and father disappear, and we have progenitor one and oh, yeah. progenitor two. Unbelievable. Oh. Dear Dr... Hill, I hope I've got your name right. It's not too complicated. Um, your uh, comments re gay marriage are biblically great and refreshing. Yes, gay bashing is not Christ like love, mm -hmm. but the Bible must be clearly spoken by our Christian leaders. That's, That's right. what we've been yes. Um, yes. saying. Um, yes, let me emphasize that. Yes. I mean, I've always treated everybody. Uh, as an equal yeah. in my pastoral ministry yeah. and loved them too. Yeah. Um, and many times um, uh, I've had to deal with people mm. whose lifestyle I don't um, Do you know what? I think of. we've become so defensive because we've been accused for so long of yeah. being the ones who are on the offensive, whereas actually exactly. I only get stirred up when I yeah. start seeing the Christian bashing going on. And I see vulnerable Christians yes. who are being hounded yes. out of public yes. sector jobs mm. because they're just holding to the historic yes. Christian faith. Mm. And, you know, there's no way out of it. I mean, I I turn That's the other it. cheek by all means. But for those that really aren't able yes. to speak for themselves, mm. to be mm. taken through the courts yes. and sued, I, I find that is... Yes. It's yes. something that really yeah. um, is completely wrong. Yes, but, but I also want to emphasise that far from gay bashing, um, I mean, I've mm. been sickened mm. by the, um, uh, uh, the sinfulness yeah. of the lifestyles of heterosexuals Absolutely. more even than I have from, from others. You know, I just I want to totally say that uh, I just treat everybody the same. Mm. Um, and and uh, it is our biblical witness that matters. We have to love one another and recognise that we're all sinners. Yes. We're all hell-deserving yeah. sinners yeah. before God. Yeah. That's what Romans 1 exactly. and 2 exactly. is all about. And that's why, I, I mean, some would only read this short passage, but I yeah. felt if to go into Romans 2, and I could have gone yeah. on, because yeah. he's really strong about those who brag yeah. about the law yeah, that's and right. dishonour God by breaking the law. Yeah. He, it, yeah. All is not What he was actually time. writing about was uh, to the Roman church, which was writ riven down the middle yeah. between Jew and Gentile. Yes. There were yeah. Jewish Christians, there were Gentile yeah. Christians, yeah. and um, uh, they were playing one-upmanship, you know, and all that sort yeah. of thing. Um, and and he's, he's saying, look, we're all sinners. All of us have fallen short. Of the, and, and I want to say that about um, heterosexual and Absolutely homosexual right. too. Absolutely. We've all fallen short yeah. of the glory of, yeah. of Jesus. So let's have none of this this stuff of one-upmanship. I totally agree. But you um, can't redefine marriage correct. because and you're you hitting can't God's redefine creation. Sin. <laughs> no, of uh, course uh, you can't. You know, we can be compassionate to but all, all sorts of people. Because of a screwed up society, they can become slightly That's right. um, uh, confused, especially if they're, uh, if they're becoming confused at a young age yep, yep, and yep, educated yep. into this That's right. um, thing. Yep. So, you yep. know, you, you just have to have compassion for them. Yeah, but look at the consequences if you redefine marriage marriage as well. You know, yeah. teachers are going to have to uh, teach that uh, um, marriage is not just uh, the great ideal. Uh, uh, you know, mm. all, all kids want to get married. Marriage is, is something that the vast majority of children yeah. uh, want. A, a wedding, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, you will destroy all that if you start really messing about and redefining marriage. Tragic. And I also believe we will bring the wrath of God upon our nation. Mm. And undoubtedly, it will be to the Conservative Party committing suicide. I think there's trouble ahead. Definitely trouble ahead. We're in our last seven minutes. Oh, um, are we? <laughs> um, a, right. Sometimes with text, we don't get the full... Um, with all the immoral nonsense happening in our society, why has the church seemed to have become nothing more than a backdrop on the English countryside and enslaved to our immoral government? Uh, uh, by the way, a lot of these emails come in it's of the spirit. It's simultaneous to yes. what you're saying. But so that's exactly what I'm saying, exactly. yes. The church um, has so imbibed the values of the world that we don't even know truth when we see it. 
the truth is there and we're not teaching it. And the church has to repent first before we can call upon the nation to repent. And to turn upside down the whole moral basis of the economy in this nation and of our education and all of our major social institutions, including politicians, um, we need to come back to the center where the basis of our morality. God is putting a plumb line of truth into this nation today. This is why he's having his own uh, advent season, turning on the light uh, to, to show up the darkness. Um, and, and this is what we need to do, um, to, to repent before God by the w of the way we have discarded truth and turned upside down the true values of our society upon which the whole foundation of our civilization uh, and as a nation, we're running deeper and deeper into trouble. Wow, that was nearly an ending. <laughs> um, that, that was, um, no, well, that was really important to state it. And mm -hmm. I, I suppose the prayer is also that the, um, that the church would somehow break out of even, even a Christian TV station and would have more <laughs> impact in the mainstream media. Because my concern is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. in the mainstream media, a biblical position is not heard at all. Uh, or if it's heard, it's caricatured. Well, that's, isn't that the beauty of Revelation TV? At least, it is. <laughs> at least if we do nothing else. Uh, on this station, you do speak that's the right. truth. Uh, we really try to. But, uh, but uh, also, all, uh, the point you've made as well is that we're all work in progress. We're all flawed yeah, and failing. Right. And Precisely. we're not Pharisees. <laughs> you know, we're not <laughs> saying we're the righteous one. You know, look at those tax collectors and sinners. We're mm. just saying, look. Yeah. We're sharing in this horrible yeah. curse of yeah. sin, yeah. and we want to warn yeah. people of, of God's judgments. There's a lovely prayer in the book of Daniel, yeah. where uh, Daniel chapter 9, I think it is, where he um, uh, prays for the nation. And although Daniel you know, was a, a real righteous man, um, yet uh, he identifies with the nation. Mm -hmm. So um, he says, um, oh Lord God, um, this is uh, Daniel 9 and I think it's about verse 5, we have sinned and done wrong. Mm -hmm. We have been wicked and rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and your laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets who spoke in your name. Uh, you know, he, uh, he himself identified. I can say that too and I'm sure you can um, we uh, I'm a minister in the church and I say that that I haven't stood against things I you know I uh, I've been a minister for so many years now and I, I look back to 1967 when the abortion act was passed it slipped through parliament with hardly any uh, mm. public noticing it at all. Um, and I, I didn't preach against it at all. I didn't even notice it. I suddenly woke up and found that we'd got an abortion law. Um, and uh, this, this, I mean, the thousands of babies who yeah. are aborted, mm. and we call them fetuses. Isn't it strange how the Duchess of, of, of Cambridge mm. She's not carrying a fetus. No. She's carrying a baby. Yeah. And she's not even 12 weeks. Mm. But all the papers speak about the royal baby. I know. When are we going to recognize yeah. that even the teenager who becomes pregnant mm. is carrying a baby right mm. from the start? Mm. Made and in the image of God. Yeah. You know, and God hates the blood that we are shedding yeah. in our nation. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, Peter Saunders, I met him earlier in the year, mm. he said that of the 100 million fatalities there are worldwide from natural disasters yeah, yeah, and natural yeah, causes, yeah. including mm. uh, yeah. abortion, he yeah. said 47 million yeah. are abortions. Yeah. Nearly 50% mm. yes. are I know. Um, fatalities. But you see, what I'm saying, Tim, I was a, a, a minister of a large church mm. um, in London mm. in those days. I had a congregation of 500, and uh, uh, the things that I said there um, were often repeated uh, in the daily newspapers, but I did not speak out, and I've never ceased to repent of mm. that. Mm. I say, 
like Daniel, I'm a sinner, Lord. Mm. I'm p partly responsible mm. because I didn't stand against these things. Or, um, and so, uh, you know, little by little, our laws have changed. Little by little, we've abandoned the standards of truth that are set out in God's word. And so we've changed the whole morality mm. of the city of London. The whole morality has changed now. Uh, and that's why There's greed no moral has reference come in. points. There's Precisely. no direct reference points. For and action. until th this was the point that Clifford Longley was making about the economy uh, in thought for today. We have to change the basis of morality in this country before we will get the economy right mm. and before we will get family right and all the rest of it mm. and the society. If we go on like this, um, which is costing us billions of pounds a year uh, in, in teenage crime, in drugs, and all these things that are uh, an outcome of family breakdown, that are wrecking the economy, you start where it is. And, and that was the moral and spiritual basis of this nation. Mm. And until we go back to roots and get the word of God out into this nation, we will go on. The welfare state will collapse and all the other social institutions because we can't afford them. Because we are wrecking it all. We are wrecking our economy mm. by our own immorality yeah. and lack of spiritual mm. truth. Thank Let's you very get much. back yeah. to the word of God, which Amen. is tr fundamental I truth. I totally agree, and thank you very much for joining us. Um, we start with repentance and humility before God, and maybe straight after this program, we can ask for the Lord's forgiveness. Thank you very much, Cliff. <laughs>